Hey, 42 here. As you know, the universe follows a predictable format. It contains galaxies, galaxies contain solar systems, and solar systems contain all of the planets. This general galactic structure is one of the first things we learn about space as kids. And it's completely wrong. Because it turns out that planets aren't just found inside solar systems. Some, known as rogue planets, don't orbit stars at all. They just drift around out there alone in the vast emptiness of space. And what we're about to uncover about them not only rewrites our cosmic rulebook, but, as you'll find out by the end of this video, completely changes the search for extraterrestrial life and what it means to be human. All those rogue planets drifting alone out there in the solitude of space with their unpredictable paths, not knowing where their future will lead, reminds me of my struggles during the festive season when it comes to managing stress and keeping on top of my busy workload. It's a very paradoxical time of year. We should all be coming together, but like rogue planets, some of us end up feeling more alone than ever before. But stress and the low moods that come with it aren't just a seasonal issue. And the earlier you can recognize it in your own thought patterns, the sooner you can enact positive change. So BetterHelp joined me in a paid partnership for this video. BetterHelp is an easy to use platform with a vast network of over 30,000 therapists, providing a convenient way to seek professional help, especially during a hectic period like right now. BetterHelp's questionnaire helps match you with a therapist who can better understand your unique struggles of stress and holiday pressures. So the therapy you receive feels very personal to you. In most cases, you can get matched with a therapist in 48 hours or less. And it's really reassuring that if the therapist you're matched with isn't a good fit, you can switch your therapist with no additional cost. If you're struggling this holiday season or beyond, I encourage you to take steps to talk to someone and join the 4 million people who are using BetterHelp to live happier, healthier lives. Click the link in the description below to get 10% off your first month. And using my link also really helps to support the channel. Now, I know what you're thinking. Just because a few planets exist outside solar systems, it doesn't mean our whole view of the cosmos is completely wrong. But get ready for random interesting fact time, because it isn't just a few planets that have gone rogue. According to researchers at both NASA and Osaka University, there are approximately six times as many rogue planets in our galaxy as there are regular ones, and 20 times as many stars. If that ratio is correct, that means there are around 2 trillion rogue planets in our galaxy alone. The problem with numbers like that is they're literally impossible for our puny human brains to comprehend, so let me help you to visualise what 2 trillion planets really looks like. If all the rogue planets in the Milky Way were grains of sand, they would fill 4 entire shipping containers. If that doesn't blow your mind, I am worried you don't have a mind to blow. Rogue planets aren't the exception. They're the rule. And with so many of them knocking around, I can't help but wonder, could they harbour life? Intuitively, it feels like the answer to that question should be a hard no. A planet without a host star would receive practically zero external energy. It would be a frigid, empty wasteland about as welcoming to life as the reactor room in Chernobyl in April of 1986. Or would it? Well, not necessarily, because it turns out that not only could rogue planets be habitable, they might just be seeding the entire universe with life as we speak. Rogue planets are created in one of two ways. The first kind form just like stars, from the collapse of colossal clouds of dust and gas, but they never gain enough mass to kick off nuclear fusion within their cores, and are instead doomed to wander the cosmos for eternity, knowing that they never truly lived up to their potential. The second group form like regular planets in boring old solar systems, but at some point the gravity of a larger planet yeets them out into empty space with such force they escape the gravity of their parent star and just keep going. Young solar systems are chaotic places, and scientists now think that this sort of unseemly planet-yeeting behaviour is actually extremely common. Which means there's a good chance our own planet has a long-lost sibling or two somewhere out there in the endless darkness of space. 
So, with all these newly suspected planets to explore, what are the chances of one of them containing alien life? If you want to bake a life cake, you need three ingredients. A variety of chemical elements, a solvent of some kind, in our case water, and an energy source. The first part should be pretty easy. The so-called chemical building blocks of life, elements like carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur and phosphorus, are abundant all over the universe, so we'd expect to find them on plenty of rogue planets. The second two parts? Not so much. Here on Earth, we get both of them from the Sun. It provides living things with energy, and it keeps the planet warm enough to support liquid water. Without a parent star, a rogue planet is going to need some other source of energy to fulfil those roles. The question is, what? The Sun is the major energy provider here on Earth by a huge margin, but it isn't the only energy provider. A whopping 0.027% of Earth's energy budget comes from within the planet itself, partly from the decay of radioactive materials and partly in the form of heat left over from Earth's formation four and a half billion years ago. On its own, this geothermal energy wouldn't be anywhere near enough to keep a starless planet warm. But if that planet had a dense atmosphere of some kind of greenhouse gas, it could theoretically trap enough heat to warm things up quite nicely. According to a study published in 1999, a hydrogen atmosphere around 100 times denser than our own would be so effective at trapping geothermal heat, it would generate surface temperatures toasty enough to support liquid water oceans. That's a promising start, and geothermal energy isn't the only thing that can keep a rogue planet warm. It's easy to assume that rogue planets are lone wanderers. In fact, that's kind of implied. But just like regular planets, there's no reason they couldn't have moons. As you probably know, the gravitational tug of our own moon is largely responsible for oceanic tides. But it isn't just water that feels the pull of the moon. It's everything. A large moon will literally stretch and compress its parent planet in what I like to think of as a big incestuous gravitational massage. All that intimate gravity-based touching causes friction, and friction generates heat. We see this in action right here in our very own solar system. Moons like Europa and Enceladus experience extreme tidal forces from gravitational interactions between their massive parent planets Jupiter and Saturn and their respective moons. As a result, and despite being well outside of what's traditionally considered the habitable zone of our solar system, both generate enough internal heat to support subsurface oceans beneath thick layers of surface ice. So, between geothermal heat and friction from tidal forces, we can confidently say that we should find liquid water on some rogue planets, or even their moons. But what about the energy needed to power living things? Until relatively recently, scientists were under the impression that every single living organism on Earth relied on the sun's energy for nourishment. In other words, they thought that the bottom of every single food chain was populated by some kind of photosynthesizer, converting energy from the sun into food. If that were true, it would be a bit of a problem for a rogue planet billions of miles from the nearest star. But luckily, it isn't. In 1977, scientists researching deep-sea hydrothermal vents discovered something remarkable. Bacteria were feeding on the rich chemical soup spewing out of the vents and turning it into food. It was the same basic concept as photosynthesis, only with chemicals as the input instead of sunlight. Today, we know this process as chemosynthesis, and we can be confident it's a perfectly viable energy source to power life because it supports entire ecosystems of diverse creatures right here on Earth, both around hydrothermal vents and cold seeps on the ocean floor and in certain cave systems. Okay, so some rogue planets should have the right chemistry for life. Some should have liquid water in oceans, either on or beneath the surface, and some should have access to energy sources capable of sustaining life. Now, considering how many rogue planets there are out there, it seems extremely likely that some are going to be habitable. That's an intriguing prospect, and it might just explain one of the biggest mysteries in all of science, the origin of life on Earth. 
for dead matter to suddenly turn into living matter. Quite a lot of seemingly very unlikely things needed to happen. Amino acids had to band together in extremely specific ways to form proteins. Long strings of various molecules had to somehow self-organize into forms that were capable of replicating themselves. And the first cell membranes had to spontaneously cobble themselves together to keep all those various bits and pieces in one place. None of these things are impossible. Self-organization in disordered systems seems to be a feature of our universe. But each of those steps occurring in just the right way to give birth to life seems so vanishingly unlikely that it's really hard to believe it ever happened. The missing ingredient here is probably time. Given enough of it, even the most unlikely things can happen. It's your classic monkey typing Shakespeare sort of deal. Give him a weekend and you'll end up with several pages of utter nonsense. But give him a few billion years and before you know it, he's wondering what light through yonder window breaks. But there's a small problem with that theory. Our planet is 4.5 billion years old. And according to our current best estimates, life first appeared here at least 3.7 billion years ago. And maybe as many as 4.2 billion years ago. Either way, things are going surprisingly quickly. And once they got going, early organisms got complex very fast. To some scientists, that just doesn't add up. A few hundred million years simply isn't enough time for a molecular monkey to bash out a living organism. And yet we know for certain that life was here. So what gives? Well, there are a few possible answers to that question. Perhaps the steps required to create life from non-living matter are a lot more likely than we think they are. Some scientists even believe they're inevitable. Maybe we just got insanely lucky and landed ourselves a genius monkey that smashed out the complete works of Shakespeare on his very first try. Or perhaps life on Earth has been evolving for much longer than we think it has. And it's here that rogue planets might come into play. According to the theory of panspermia, life didn't necessarily originate on planet Earth at all. It traveled here from elsewhere in the cosmos. If that were true, Earth life might be billions of years older than previously thought. That would go a long way to explaining how life got going so soon after the formation of the planet, and how early Earth life achieved such surprising complexity in the first few hundred million years after it appeared. One of the biggest problems with the panspermia theory has traditionally been the question of how exactly the seeds of life crossed the vast distances between the stars. Space dust, or asteroids, are two of the most commonly suggested dispersal mechanisms. But any life hitching a lift on either of those will be exposed to the incredible hostile environment that is naked space. But what if life's been traveling around the universe in much cozier circumstances all along? Could a passing rogue planet have seeded Earth with life four billion years ago? Might we all be aliens on an alien world without even knowing it? Okay, so we're well into the realm of wild speculation here, but it's a hell of an idea all the same. When we look for life out there in the universe, we tend to search for conditions that are as close to our own as possible. An orphaned planet cruising through the darkness of space billions of miles from the nearest star is about as different to planet Earth as it's possible to be. And yet, by some estimates, rogue planets are home to more habitable real estate than can be found anywhere else in our galaxy. And that makes them incredibly important. As of today, they're still poorly understood. For obvious reasons, they're difficult to detect and that makes them hard to study. It seems extremely likely that some rogue planets will prove to be habitable. But for now, it's impossible to say for sure just how many. The good news is, if just one in a hundred thousand turn out to have the right conditions for life, that's still 20 million habitable rogue planets zipping around our galaxy. And who knows, these lonely wanderers might just be our universe's silent farmers, sowing the seeds of life wherever they go. Thanks for watching.
Just a quick word to say that I couldn't make these videos without the support of my Patreon members. Consider joining the exclusive 42 Discord community by supporting me on Patreon. It's a great place to discuss my videos with like-minded individuals and myself. The link's in the description, but if you don't want to, or you can't join my Patreon, then please don't worry. A simple like or comment to say thanks would also put a huge smile on my face. Thank you.